Hey guys, I'm James Plan, and this is the first video walkthrough on Tower of Glory, a uh, turn based strategy game that I'm making based on a random idea I found online where you conquer towers to gain glory. You can see I've got a basic DirectX window running here, there's nothing in it at the moment. I did make some camera controls, but seeing as though there's nothing in view, you can't see anything, it's just strafing forwards, backwards, left, and right, and there's some zoom buttons as well. I've got some of the basic programs set up, uh, meshes, models, that sort of thing, so we can use them. And now we're going to work on stuff that can actually be used for the game itself, rather than the environment. So today I'm going to look at tiles and the tile manager, so we can make a map for the game to be played on. Uh, we're going to start off by making a new class called tile manager. And this is going to be used to keep a list of the different tiles that we use, tiles being grass or stone uh, currently. We may add more as the game progresses. But right now we're just going to stick with the two. Grass for basic movement and so forth. And uh, stone will be able to be built upon eventually when we get to building towers. Uh, so, this is the CPP. I'm going to drag this over here. I'm going to keep CPPs on one side and uh, headers on the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the includes we're going to need. Uh, we're going to need the vectors because we're going to use vectors to keep track of our lists. Um, I'll comment this out for now, but we will need tiles, because it needs to know about the tiles, to be able to uh, use them. Uh, we're going to need FX to pass the tiles. And input for the mouse, so we can click on tiles. And then finally, this is also to be passed to the tiles to allow them to render. And then we need our namespaces. Um, so direct X, basically anything that's used for rendering. And the map one, so we can use vector three. We're going to store quite a lot of vector threes over the course of this program. They're very helpful for positions and rotations, etc. So. We've got all our includes in. Uh, it's time to start on the functions. Every class needs an initialize. It doesn't need it, but I prefer to have them. It's better than working within the constructor. And we're going to use this initialize to pass through a model for use of the tiles, which is just going to be a little quad. Uh, the FX that we use to render, which is also a pointer, and the mouse and keys input. And then we're going to have a couple of frame calls. This doesn't appear to be picking up. Oh, it's cool. We're going to have a couple of frame calls. So stuff that happens every frame. Uh, for this class, it's just going to be the update and render. And the update is going to be a float and a vector 3, where the vector 3 is the cam position. And the float is D time. And then we're going to have render, which just means D time. So that's it for the functions right now. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of private uh, attributes. So we've got a vector of tile pointers, uh, although I'm going to have to comment this out because we haven't made tile yet. And it's going to be called tile list. And then we've got how many rows there is. So I'm going to have nine rows and 15 columns. And that will allow us to get a good balance of grass tiles and stone tiles to allow for two opposing sides to have a fight. Uh, I've already got all the resources gathered together, so this is just going to be on coding. Um, if you're looking for something on design with resources, this is not the right video. Okay, so uh, let's make the tile now actually. We'll get the header for the tile done. So we can add a new class. Do class wizard tile. So Alright, so we're going to need a few more includes on this one. Uh, I believe we need the vector. If not, I'm going to move it at a later date. And I don't. Oops. I'm going to have D3D to so like to render. That's the DirectX 3D drawing. Uh, it's going to need a model. Oops. 
and it's going to need to know about meshes as well. Because we're going to get that model from the mesh manager, which is in the mesh box. And then the FX, so that it can render. And finally the input, so we know when we're hovering over it or clicking on it. And then we've got the same namespaces as before. It's not necessary that we'll use all these, but it's good to have them just in case. And then we don't need to go back and add them. We can always delete them at a later stage. Uh, again, we're going to have the initialize function. It's going to pass a model pointer. Uh, an FX pointer. This is not identical to the last one. Mouse and keys. And I did the same thing again there. And we're going to pass two ints as well, which is going to be the row and the column of the title. We've got our frame calls again. So here we've got an update and render. These will be the same, may as well copy and paste them. And a couple of extra things. So get texture in is going to allow us to easily change the title's text textures. Um, without having to clutter the bulk of our code in update. And we're going to use this, for example, when hovering over a tile, I want it to turn green. So we can see that it's a viable space to move to, or something like that. And then we're going to have a, a little void function here, just again, so we don't clutter up the space of the program. We we'll probably even made private, actually, these. Um, unless I need them elsewhere, and I find that out. And this is going to say whether or not it's a stone piece, so we can set it as stone rather than grass as a texture. Okay, then we're going to have some attributes. We'll have a model called quad, which we're going to find in this initialize. We'll have an effects manager called my effects, and that's going to be a pointer because we're using it from game, so we're passing it in from game, which is our main part of the program. The same for mouse and keys. MP, MK. And then we're going to keep track of the row and column of this tile so we can deduce exactly where it is. And I'm also going to make a little enumerable down, enumerable down here uh, to keep track of the type of tile. Because when we add more, it's going to get pretty complex. So at the, we could have had it as just something like a bug boolean that takes whether it's stone or not. But I don't know how much I'm going to add to this at the moment. So I'm going to keep it like this and say that as a default, it's grass. And then we only need to change it if we decide it's not grass. Oops, that should be capital. Okay, so that's the headers for both files done. Uh, we can move over now and start working on the Tile Manager CPP. So, we've got these two, and we're not going to change these at all. Just going to keep them as they are. So, I'll make them take up a little less space. And then we'll start working below. So, first up, we've got initialize. And that's going to take a model pointer, view mod, an effects pointer. And the mouse and keys pointer. Mouse and keys. That's about right. Uh, again, <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing them single columns. It seems to be the only place where I'm doing it. Okay, so in this function, we're going to want to create a list essentially. And we can comment out this little line now because we have the title header. Uh, oh, and this needs to know about title, so we'll comment on that line as well from earlier. That's all working. Okay, so in this function, we're gonna basically uh, populate the list of tiles. So we will make a little for loop here for the rows, and underneath it, there'll be another one for the columns. I'm going to use dynamic memory allocation to do this. It's columns, not columns. So 
So, uh, we're in here now. We'll make a new tile pointer. And we'll make it point to a new tile we need. Then I'm going to initialize that tile. Passing into it. Mod. VFX. BMK. Rows. And columns. Not the uh, M rows that we're keeping in here. But the actual row and column that it is. Because the tile only needs to know about its own position, not the others. And then we're going to push that onto the list of tiles we have. Which adds it to the back. So that's that function done. Uh, the update and render are both pretty similar. So I'm going to do one and then pretty much copy and paste it. We've got Tile Manager. Update. Float. The reason that the update needs to know about the cam position is so we can draw a raycast from it to find out where the mouse is and if it's pointing at something. So we're going to say 4 t equals 0, the number of tiles, and we'll check how many is in the list in case we decide to change the numbers at a later date. And then plus plus. And we're just going to say update that tile. the relevant information and this render one is going to be the same apart from it will be render and it doesn't need to pass in the cam position so that's the tile manager class done you can basically see what this is doing it's making a list full of tiles and then in every frame from the game we're going to ask it to update that list and render that list uh, before we move on to tile, we may as well go into game and actually just make a little uh, list here. So, I'm going to make a list of tiles on the map. Tile manager and tiles. Ah, I need to include it, of course. So, if I can include up here, tile manager. Oops. And now it likes it. So in game itself, um, we are going to need to start by initializing it. So we'll go into the load function that I've got here, and we'll say uh, tiles and tile manager. Well, not not tiles so much as tile uh, model. Okay. So we're going to make a model because all tiles need to look like something. I'm going to call it quad. And I'm going to say initialize the quad. And we're going to use a function in the geometry builder pack that I've got in utilities that says uh, build a quad. So I'll show you what that looks like real quick. It's just going to make the vertex buffers, and the indices buffers, and then build a quad. Very simple square okay uh, and then what we need to do is uh, initialize these tiles so we're going to call the function that we made just a minute ago initialize and we're going to pass in the quad uh, the fx pointer not the quad itself so the pointer to the quad to the model and the info all right so that initialization is good to go. Uh, we'll move on to the update now, which is here. So I'm going to put it just before the cam update. I don't think it really matters which order to go in. But we're going to say M tiles update, and pass in D time and cam position, and then we'll have that in the render as well. So that's going to go just between the projection matrix which has just been created and basically the end of the function. So render the log tiles. I want to say m tiles dot render. Okay, uh, I think we're done in game. So let's move on and make the tiles themselves. Alright. So we've got the header done. And we will just 
lean these up a bit like we did with the other one. Alright, gives us plenty of room to work with. So, start off with the initialize again, right here. I'm just going to copy this header because it will make it a bit quicker. So we're going to go to panel. Obviously, that's it there. And I'm going to call on pmod pfx. Down here. R and C. Cool. So we'll say emro equals R. So we're setting the row that this tile is on, and the end call equals C. And we're basically just going to fill all these empty variables, these empty attributes, uh, with the stuff we pass to it. So that if we need it at any later point, we don't need to pass it between functions uh, from the game to this. We've already got it stored, and that should make it a lot more efficient than having to pass these um, mouse and keys and the effects in to every update and render. And then we're going to have to initialize the model, because we haven't done anything to that yet. So we're going to initialize it by saying, here's the model we passed in, get the mesh. And that will get the mesh of the model we created up here, which is the club that we built from the geometry builder. Uh, next up, we'll set the position of it. And this is going to differ depending on where in the uh, vector of the tile manager it came in. So that's why we need to pattern the rows and columns. And we're going to say this is a vector 3. Because uh, that's how we keep track of positions in most 3D programs. Um, okay. So the tiles are going to take up... Uh, they, they have a, a diameter of 1, basically. So they're going to take up twice as much room as we expect. Uh, sorry, between them, we're going to have to have a space of two. Um, so that will line them up nicely next to each other. We may have to alter these numbers for them to display at the rec correct place on the screen. And then we'll do the same thing for us. But we'll come back to that later if it looks a bit dodgy. Okay. And then we're going to make a little bit of a material. And we're going to set the GFX data, the graphic effects. Because, oops, that needs to be here. We just want to make this light up properly with the correct graphical properties. So we're finding the material that's attached to this quad essentially, and then we're going to use that to set the data. Oops. Uh, I'm not going to go through this, I've got it separate on another screen that I use for most objects, so I'm just going to copy and paste it into there. But slowly scroll through it in case I ever want to. Okay, uh, we're done in here for now. So we'll move on to the update. This is quite a big one. In fact, we'll do the render first because it's simple. So we'll make render p time. And all we're going to do in here is get the effects pointer to render quad within context. Nice and simple. In fact, oh, we can come back to a bit later. I'll just leave it as an empty function right now. It's one of the finishing touches. But we'll make the function so that the program doesn't say uh, I'm looking for this and you haven't defined it anywhere. We'll just leave it like that for now. So, um, I believe if we run this we should see something. Oops. What have I done wrong here? Ah. It's because I could 
forgot to change it when I copied and pasted. <laughs> okay, so we've got something here, um, but we haven't actually assigned any textures to it yet. So that's something we need to do. Um, I could have done it in the initialize, but because I'm planning to change it every frame in the update anyway, there's no point doing it initially because it's going to update as soon as you start the program. So we may as well just go back to that update for now. And uh, okay, for now I'm just going to leave it like this. We'll go to the end of initially. Let me see. Pmap dot texture equals grass and we'll say pmap e texture rb is what we want and we're going to load from the effects and the graphic that we want which is just a simple grass texture for now. So we're saying get the texture name, uh, which means we need to develop that function as well, which is just going to tell us basically the file path. And that doesn't work that way. to D. That would be one. Still don't need that geometry builder. Okay. So we'll make this get texture and function next. So this is just a simple function. We put in the bool in for later when we determine whether it needs to be uh, shaded in a different colour or not. Right now, we will just return tiles slash grass BDS. I'm just putting it in to set up for later. I could have put in tiles slash grass here, but this way is just laying the groundwork for the future a bit better. So let's see if they've uh, changed textures now. Thing, so it didn't have the right context. Cool. So we've got these right now. These uh, little grass tiles. But if I reset to the initial composition, uh, they're a little off center. And that's because we started at a positive number and zero is the middle of our screen. So we basically start at zero rather than starting at a negative number. Um, so we need to go back a little bit, and I think it's going to be around about uh, these numbers here, maybe a little different. So let's go ahead, um, I'll try the initial numbers. So the first one's columns, so we'll put minus 15 in here. And the next one was rows, which is 9, so I'll put 9 in there. Now I'm going to have to come in here and change that if I decide to change these rows and columns, otherwise they'll be off center. But, um, I don't think we're going to be doing th that much, at least not until we get into changing game modes and stuff. So that's a little too far down to the left, so I'll try it one last week. Okay, that looks better. It's well centred. 
I think I am going to move it up a bit further, just so we have a little space at the bottom in case we need to develop any GUI stuff later. Um, the player is going to be able to move around anyway, so it's not that bad. But if we just have it at a base position where it's up a little higher, then it won't be obstructed in view at the start of the game if we have a GUI down here. So I'm just going to move it up another couple. Cool. So, the last thing we've got to work on today, just so we can make sure that we can hover over tiles and see them and uh, have them flash green if we're hovering them. You know, so like in any game where you're trying to select something. Actually, not the last thing, we've got to make some stone tiles as well, but we'll do this first. So in the update function, uh, we're going to say update to see if it's been hovered over. And this is going to be quite complex. So we'll start off by making a float. We're going to use the XM float to store this. Because that's what we need to pass into our um, banding box setup. So we're going to make an XM float for it called center. And this is going to hold the position of the center of the quad. So the quad starts at zero and then spreads out in each direction by the one unit, thus covering a two by two square. So, uh, oops, skipping ahead there. So we need to start the constructor for the XM float. In the constructor, we're going to say, get the position of X, and then this one there. <laughs> And then we're going to get the position of Y and Z as well. Okay. Then we're going to make a bounding box. So this is going to be the area of the tile that we can hover over in 3D space for it to clash with our mouse. Our mouse is rear cast anyway. So we're going to set the centre as the centre that we just made. And then we have extents, which is how far we want the box to go out. Now, you'd think to make it one in each direction to cover the full uh, surface of the tile. But if we do that, then hovering over the edge of tiles is going to cause them to select multiple at once. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller than that. And we're going to make it another XM float. And we're just going to put 0.7F in each of these and see how that works out. Oops, missed the three there. Okay, next we need to make a ray. So we need to point from our mouse, which is in 2D space, into 3D space. And see if it hits anything. And we need a flow. Which we're going to use uh, in a moment. Alright, so now we're going to find the mouse position to world with a ray. So we're going to use that mouse and keys from earlier to do mouse pulse to world array. And this is all in the, uh, in the uh, input file, which is in my utilities section. So we're going to use the FX. And uh, get a view matrix. I'm going to get a projection matrix too. And then we need a cam position. And then the last bit, which is the ray itself. Okay. So now I'm going to have a simple if statement. And this is going to say whether or not it's intersecting, hence whether or not it's hovering. We're going to say if ray intersects tile. And this f is basically getting passed back. Uh, yeah, it, it passes a distance back into f. I'm not sure if we actually need it, to be honest. Uh, I don't think we're going to use it at any point, but it shows the distance it is away, which is nice. Uh, anyway, 
that will be the grass has been hovered over, so let's make a wall. Not grass, it's not always grass. Pile is being hovered over. So here we're going to need to set up the material again. And we're basically going to overwrite uh, the material that we used earlier. And then I'll check it in. So in the same way that we uh, did earlier, in fact I can just copy and paste this line because it's the exact same, apart from the fact that it's not a pointer anymore. So we can change that quite quickly. There we go. And then we're going to say map texture equals grass G. And override it. So I said grass G because that's the file name I've got for a, a green grass. I know grasses are already green, but as in highlighted green. Alright, so we're going to have to go back into this get texture name now because at the moment it's still returning the same thing. Um, we'll do that just now. So I'm going to say if this ball hover is true, or if it's not true, sorry. Then we will return grass. Else, if it is true, whoops, don't really need the uh, brackets there. Tab got me. Then we'll return the other one. So, if it is being hovered, we'll return grass G instead. Okay. Right, we now need to make an else this is statement. Because we're changing if it's been hovered over, but if they hover over it and then move off it, uh, then oops, then it's still going to stay a light green colour. So, uh, we're just going to do the same thing in here. We're just going to change that back to this, which essentially means, ah yes, we also need to make this false, so we're passing in false of the hover, so it's getting the first one, otherwise it would be getting the true, so we can get rid of these lines now, don't need those anymore. And we can probably move this outside. And we should be able to move this outside as well. Just cleaning it up a bit. So hopefully, all being well, we should be able to change the textures by hovering over these. There we go. So you can see that there's a bit of room where the bounding box misses. Um, so we might up that up a bit and see how it changes. If I zoom out, I wonder if I can get to the edges. No, not really. But yeah, it's, uh, it seems to be working pretty well. Whoops. Uh, yeah, I did stop that one. So we'll try it with 0 0.8. See if we can get more into those corners without falling over on, spilling over onto the next tile. Uh, that's uh, messing up a little bit there. We don't want to be able to select two at once. Okay, we'll try 7.5. If not, we'll just go back to 7. That seems to be working pretty well. Awesome. So we've got most of this set up now. Uh, it's just a couple more things we need to do. One of them is to make this set stone function. Uh, and we need to use this, which is what the set stone function is going to do. It's going to say, remember the tile this time.
Uh, we didn't pass anything into it. Right, so here's where we need to do a bit of counting. And here's where it makes it awkward if I decide to change the amount of rows or columns we have. We'll just need to edit the functions accordingly. Um, but we're going to have to do this bit manually. So we're going to want a stone here on each side for the base, here and here. And then one here, one here, one in the middle, and then somewhere about here and here. Um, I actually drew this out uh, in fireworks and plotted out where I wanted them to be. So I already have the numbers of the rows and the columns. So uh, I'm just going to quickly type this up because it is the correct ones. Changing the type. We'll copy and paste this a bunch of times. In fact, we'll do it once for the other side. And in the middle, um, we're going to say it's equal to 2 and it's equal to either 3 or, oops, need a double line there, that means or. Or if it's equal to 11, do the same thing. Um, let me miss a bracket there. Yep. And then the same for the other side. So that's going to be if it's 6, 3, or 11. And then we've got the middle row, which is going to say if it's equal to 4. Um, 0 or 7 or 14. So I'm going to have to add another one of these to the end of it. Okay, and hopefully that should give us stone in the relevant places. Um, right now, though, if we run this, it's still going to look exactly the same because we haven't returned the textures for the stone yet. So why don't we just nip back to this texture now and we can say. Um, so in this folder, let's make a switch. In fact, we don't need the brackets because we're just making a switch to all of it. And we make a switch on M type, which is the innumerable we made earlier, that stores either stone or grass, the one that we just changed. And I'll put this grass, and that's where we'll return this. And then I'll put okay, stone. And we don't need to break. You'd usually put a break at the end of this line, but we don't need to because we're returning anyway. So we'll leave in the uh, function. Thus not continuing downwards. We'll return the stone one. And then we're going to do the same thing for this else. So I'll just copy and paste this and add a G on the end of them. Try that and hopefully we should have some stone. No stone. What have I done here? Oh, I haven't called the set stone function. <laughs> Silly me. So we're going to say set stone here. And then every tile will just check when it's initialized. Am I stone or am I not stone? There we go. So they're plotted out nicely. They're changing to green, just the same as the grass tiles, and we'll hover over them. And zoom in a little bit. So the texture is remaining stone, but just changing to a lighter colour, as you can see. Okay. So there's just one last thing that I want to add before we end this first video. And that's going to be that if we click on something, I want it to go red. And I'm probably not going to keep this in the final program, but I just want to check for now um, to make sure that we can code clicking. So we're going to look at the mouse and keys 
from the input file. And we say get mouse button. And we want to get the mouse and keys. Left button. Which is defined as such. So we're going to make one last switch statement. Again, we're going to close in bracket. And then I'll just change that to red. Hopefully that should make it a red when I click down. So hovering is green, not hovering is basic, and then if I click, it turns to red. So I'm holding down the mouse button here. But if I remove it, then it goes straight back to green. Just zoom in so you can see that a bit better. Right. So I think that pretty much concludes this first video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned soon for part two where I'm going to be discussing player and turn order. After that, we're moving on to towers. Thanks.